is up, everybody? Welcome to something like a traveling live stream. You know what that means? Shenanigans. Wild shenanigans. Is this even going to work? Who knows? No one knows. You're in for a treat, regardless of what happens. An actual live stream or a stunning crash and burn. I'm Josh ki 6 naz Thanks for clicking on the Amber Radio Crash Course. Hang tight. Enjoy the memes. We'll get started soon. Thank you. I am exhausted. <laughs> Everybody hear me all right? I'm assuming yes. I will show you my Rude Goldberg contraction to make this all work. <laughs> you sound okay. <laughs> Is it not enough? Let me bump it up. Howdy. Better? Could be better. Stream is on. Good. Bumped up the gain a little bit. There we go. Yeah, exactly. All right, let me walk over to my tiny mini fridge and grab a tiny beer. I've been screwing around with this stream for this whole evening. How is it going, everybody? Let's see if this causes it to explode. Is this going to make it blow up? Well, I did just launch beer right into the, uh, onto the laptop, so we'll see. Mm. I'm back in the hotel. Sorry I couldn't do a live stream directly at the gathering site. The internet was just not hot out there. In fact, we had a, we had a lot of random RFI, too. It turns out that there's these kind of makeshift power lines they have set up for some construction going on. So it's pretty gnarly. Tiny beer. Also, I have a mad wide angle on right now. This is an 11 meter wide angle lens <laughs> with a 1.8 aperture, which is pretty, pretty ridiculous. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks again for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Uh, should just be a chill live stream today. I'm going to go through some of the pictures, uh, talk about the gathering, what it is, and what we've been doing out here. And I'll talk about the amateur radio portion of it. For those that attended, I've been teaching for two days in the area of emergency communications, what I would like to call um, your personal preparedness emergency communications, and a little bit, little bit into the, the Aries and the Races world, talking about kind of what they do and the interoperation with the um, first responders. I was lucky enough to have a dispatcher, actually, that was in the class. So that was really fun getting their insight and their thoughts on uh, amateur radio operators. So maybe we'll talk about that. Man, I am drinking a uh, local local brew. This is the 50 West Coast to Coast India Pale Ale. This is by 50 West Brewing Company out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Boy, I've got more Ohio little niche things that, uh, that I learned on this trip. I'm telling you, I have fun out here in Ohio. To the chagrin of my wife, she doesn't want to move out of uh, California. Not saying I would move to whole Ohio, but you get the idea. Spa FF0013. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I appreciate you checking out the live stream. Okie dokie. Let's go ahead and take our roundabout thanks and get started here with a note. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. No, that's not it. There's me. That's not it. I don't even know what's going on. Why? <laughs> Everything worked and now it's gone. It's gone. What happened? It's gone. Seriously, what happened? <laughs> there it is. All right. Hey guys, if you want to help support the chat, go ahead and uh, check out hamtactical.com. That is where the merch flows that supports the podcast and the YouTube channel. And if you're so inclined, every person that's ever told you FT8 
is a low power mode. It is not. You can wear this shirt with pride. We have a ton of other shirts over at hamtactical.com, so check that out. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is, let's see, apparently what happened at Pathfinder State. No, no, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it. Um, but obviously there'll be some videos because I did do, do some testing of the antennas, and I did record my talks, but I wasn't going to live stream them because I was talking specifically to that group, and I wanted to, um, to just be present with them. Question, why so dark? Because... Because? <laughs> because I'm in a hotel room with horrible lighting. <laughs> Unless you're talking about my, uh, my whole mess there with finding the uh, slideshow. Okay. I also want to mention something. Uh, it is time. I haven't done this in a while, and we need to get back into this. So I am going to share the word on this right now for all you. You're the first to know about this. We are going to do a antenna recommendations from Josh live stream again. And I want you to make it simple. I want you to tell me what you're trying to do. In this case, I want to get on 20 and, 10, 20, and 40 meters. And I would like more bands if possible. You want, tell me your budget. In this case, this individual's budget is $250,000. And he has sent me an overhead shot of, the, or of his home. And I'm going to draw all over this live and tell them what I think they should get for an antenna. You send your emails to josh at hamtactical.com, and that is how you can contact me, josh at hamtactical.com. Send me what you want to do with your radio as far as antennas go, your budget, and what bands, what operation, all that stuff. And HF, VHF, UHF, just make it, give me as many details as you can, but that overhead satellite is picture is needed so keep that in mind okay okay very good all right so again i am out here at the i'm in now i'm in jackson ohio but the gathering is in vinton county fairgrounds in ohio nice little group really nice uh fairgrounds so i'm going to show you some images from that and we'll talk about some of the fun we've been having all right so the gathering is Dave Canterbury's event that uh, he's on YouTube. You've probably seen him before. Dave Canterbury, really cool guy, really cool videos. He's been doing it for just so long, so many YouTube videos. Pathfinder Outdoors uh, is kind of their gear-centric group. They also have a knife-making team and some other stuff as well. But the gathering is about training. Uh, there are workshops, there are classes. It is a camping event. It starts on Friday and goes through Sunday. It is mostly self-reliance, personal preparedness, but it this year included things like amateur radio, among some other things that were pretty interesting that I was involved in. This is what the schedule looked like, so it's an absolutely packed schedule. There was meat preservation, literally somebody using traditional means to smoke meat, there was a metal detecting clinic, goat husbandry, butchering a goat, live butchering, like they literally shot it right there. I got to see it, it was pretty wild. Uh, fly fishing basics, outdoor photography. That was Alex, um, Alex Wander and his, uh, his girl, I think significant other is what I'll say. I don't know if they're married or not, but uh, they were there. Really nice uh, to, talk, to chat with him. Not emergency communications was mine, uh, followed by emergency shelters at the same time. So you could either pick emergency shelters or emergency communication at that particular hour. Uh, everything from canning meat, basket making, flint and steel, milk for using milk, cast iron selection and use, uh, overland camping and gear, trail cooking for the backpack, compass use and navigation, uh, just on and on. And that went into Saturday as well, which they're pretty much just wrapping up. Uh, included more stuff about goats, <laughs> another youth metal detecting, which I think the oldest dated coin uh, was in the 60s. They didn't find any any silver. It was all uh, later 60s. Butchering rabbits, bro the bow drill clinic. Again, I did mine um, on emergency communications, and I took questions live, which was a lot of fun. Net making, plant walk. They went up into the back hills up outside the fairgrounds. And we're able to do some foraging. Butchering chickens, homesteading, and pack goats, which I should have went to pack goats because, you know, I may have a future in that. Map reading basics, primitive traps, cast iron cooking, you get the idea. It goes on and on. You can go to the website, which I think it should be listed. Anyway, if you search for 
uh, Pathfinder the Gathering, you'll find the website for it for next year. So make sure you check that out. So shout out to my mom. She loves these quilting pattern um, boards that a lot of people out in Ohio put up on their barns. And there was one on the county fairgrounds building that I was doing my talk on. So I made sure to snap a picture of it. But there's uh, really cool fairgrounds. Like it's a really classic look. It's heavy into 4-H and whatnot. But uh, there's this really cool old covered bridge from the 1800s. Yeah, 1800s, late 1800s when this was built. And it's mostly original, which I found uh, really, really fascinating. So I thought that was really cool. I, I took a shot of the police station because I thought the building looked really cool. It's all this really old building style, uh, really beautiful. This was right on the way in. but So once you hit it, the grounds, you've got this really cool background uh, of these this really nice forest, really dense forest. And they ended up using this for a lot of the foraging classes that they did and uh, some of the tree identification. It didn't happen. They have classes for tree identification at the Pathfinder School, but uh, they didn't do a lot of that here. However, they did utilize that space. So as you can see, a lot of the vendors getting set up the morning of. A lot of the vendors are going to be personal preparedness items, kind of what you would expect. Knives, packs, um, bed rolls, different types of um, equipment for cooking, etc. Dave brought out his camping trailer. There's a high wheelbase camper with an eye camper top on it and showed of his cooling system and his cook system along with it. He did a whole hour long segment on that and he pulls it behind his uh, Jeep Gladiator. Anybody notice the uh, stickers on there? Look familiar? Pactena DX Engineering. I thought that was pretty cool so I snagged a picture of that as well. Pathfinder has, again, things like I already mentioned, canteens, thermoses that are single-walled so you can cook in them, double-walled. Not really a good idea to cook in them because they can explode. Uh, there is an antenna I will talk about. I think these might be out of order because that should not be at this point. But you can see uh, that is the antenna I was playing with this weekend. Lots of kitchen gear for pack-in, pack-out stuff. There's a smoker there. A lot of paracord. The, the wound up cord there you see on the top most edge is bank line, which you can use for catfish fishing. Not really. I believe that's illegal in California. I kind of had a joke about that. Uh, after hours, there was a kind of main classes and there was walk on times. But the wrap up meeting kind of looked like this. A lot of people. There was a lot of people there. The people that paid full price for the tickets were the ones that could come to the raffles at the end of the day. The sessions looked like this. There were tents set up. And a lot of times it was standing room only for things like orienteering and butchering and feel, or a primitive field smoking of meat, meat preservation. But you can see they had these really cool tents set up that they would do the talks on. The one closest to us with the white top is the one they used for uh, map reading, advanced map reading, and fire making with you know tinder and flint and steel. Okay, so there's, there's the first shot of the antenna. Uh, I have a chameleon terminated dipole that they sent to me, and yeah, it is raining. It rained a pretty good chunk of the day Saturday, and you can see that here. There is a, a really cool mass that we'll talk about, but that's the, the transformer box or the, the dipole one-to-one -one in there at the top of the mast section, hooked to a pulley, and then the 60-foot-ish strands of wire were brought down in an inverted V. There's a shot looking up of that really cool mast. This was a Marconi mast system that was made in Canada uh, and used in the military for what I was told was like a radar, field expedient radar or satellite system. And there's the mast. That is the mast tag. Canadian Marconi Company with some contractor information. That individual is uh, W8 Mary, uh, oh shoot, Mary Lima Papa. He has a different uh, way to remember that, pneumatic device, but that is the way to say it uh, in phonetics. He's sitting on the top of the uh, central guy point mast, and this is actually a ratcheting mast, so it ratchets itself up. You, you ratchet it, but it's got a ratcheting system. 
And you can deploy parts of it by literally standing or sitting like he's doing on that top first section. And this is a rotatable mast. It's designed to be rotated, and there's actually a special guying system that goes along with it. So I was literally thinking this is like the, um, the really military robust version of the mast works. Uh, really rigid mast system here in, in, in application. They had uh, 400 watts of solar panels that they had laid out, which is pretty good. Now, a couple of things I want to mention. First one, uh, Ohio surprises me sometimes. Uh, Ohio, you know, you guys showed me about uh, Skyline Chili and all the variations of Skyline Chili, but I got something new out of Ohio, and that's Ski. This soda is superior to Mountain Dew. If you like Mountain Dew, this soda is for you. And everybody that's everybody tells me that you got to drink it out of the bottle. Don't even bother getting a can. I like both. I had both. I had canned, ski, and bottled ski. And it was really good. Uh, Spike says, Skyline Chili is nasty. That's okay. That's okay. I don't care. Uh, ski is awesome, though. I was a big fan of ski. Anyway, the other thing I want to mention, Hill People Gear, this chest harness. Um, this thing is really cool. I've got to find one that may be a bit more adaptable to amateur radio. I think that's going to be uh, a pretty awesome little piece of kit to possibly carry in some radios in, up front, carry some of your gear up front, like your handhelds, and uh, some of the stuff you may need while you're walking and help you lighten up the pack a little bit. So Hill, Hill People Gear is a mention there. And that was pretty much my last slide, so you're going to have to wait and see... You're going to have to wait and see what is in store for the videos that I'm making. Let's check the chat room and see what's going on with everybody. I'm just glad this is working. We've, we've got a pretty rock-solid stream so far. Cheers, everybody. We made it work. I got a burger, small fries, and a bottle of ski. Yeah, so I found out what the origin of that was. That's a song. The... The fine folks at the Vinton County Amateur Radio Club explained the origin of that whole thing. So, thank you guys. Want to say a big thank you to um, all the folks at the Vinton County Amateur Radio Club. You did a really good job. And they're still out there. Uh, still out there right now, I think. Or about, now they're, they're close to wrapping up. Yeah, because it's 8 o'clock local time. I have to remember not to look at my laptop clock because obviously that's set in the past and I'm in the future. Or the past, the other way around. I can't remember. Don, N5SKT, can you order ski online? I think, I think you can, but it's really good stuff. I was really impressed. Slaw Burgers and Fries. Uh, what song? I don't remember the song name. Did I take a picture of it? Dumas, Dumas something. Do it, ah, I don't remember. Somebody will get it. Dumas Walker by the Kentucky Headhunters. That's it, Spike. Yeah, Spike got it. That's it. Yeah. Big fan of ski. Bummed out that <laughs> bummed out that I can't get it back home. But yeah, so it turns out that I guess the origin of it is from it's from Tennessee, and uh, it's attained some level of prominence in Ohio, but not all parts of Ohio. Pretty interesting. All right. Shane, KI6QFI, says, I had a successful pod activation today. I also worked chili. Wow. That's really, really cool, man. Good job. On 15. Whoa. Wait. Chili, Argentina, Japan, and Australia on 15 meters? That's really good. That's really good. Sorry I wasn't in front of an HF radio. I was trying to set some stuff up here and get my internet going. And yeah, I am a little dark. What's up with that? Let's in engage the light. Is that better? Marginally. Oh, cool. Jedi of the Republic. You can order it from Ski's website. Very good. Okay, so that was my big thing that I wanted to talk about. And you're like, Josh, you've only been streaming for like 20 minutes. I know. I'm not going away yet. I will remind everybody, though, that we'll attempt to do a live after chat. And, and I want to remind everybody what the after chat's for. I, uh, I got to talk to a lot of people this weekend, and they were truly of the entry-level space in amateur radio. In fact, my whole slide package, I was really trying, trying to tailor it to people 
who didn't have much experience with any radio communication, not just amateur radio communication. And I had a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of fun. So the, the goal and reminder for everybody watching, if you're, if you're not already a part of the HRCC Discord, link in the description, it is a live chat room that is voice and text if you want, one or the other, doesn't matter. Uh, and we're just out there to help people. And after every one of these live streams, we go over there on the Discord and we help people out, answer questions, have a lot of fun. So we will we'll be doing that today because I, I do have what seems like relatively stable internet. I might not be live streaming to Twitch, but um, we will be doing that. So I hope you consider joining us over there. Okay? Let's see. And thank you, Evan, for posting the link there. Yeah. Uh, the... The Hill People stuff, Hill People gear, SAR, Search and Rescue, uh, kit bag. There's a lot of really cool stuff they make. Not cheap, though, necessarily, but good stuff. I'm sure Adam may have a couple of things out there. There is a couple. There is one other thing I want to talk about. I had a busy uh, news week in amateur radio, didn't we? A lot of you have already seen this information, but I figured we might have a little fun talking about it. So let me go back over here. Ha ha! You know what this is about. Let me get myself in there. Let me get in on this. All right, so you know that Yesu introduced a new radio this week. And I, I've got some thoughts. I, I'll be honest. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you've, if you've all noticed this recently and in the past. Uh, a lot of my commentary on radios like radios that have come out, 6100, uh, a radio that has been announced, but um, I haven't talked about it yet because I actually have the prototype version of it. This is not one of them. I don't have the Yesu. Nobody, nobody at John Crew can say Josh is talking smack. He doesn't have it. I'm not saying that. Uh, I generally hold my commentary until I get the radio in my hand because it feels like, and this is no offense to the YouTubers that do this, because I think it's important. I think people need to know about it, and I think it's good we get the info out. But it's a lot of just uh, crystal ball gazing in some cases. We can have educated guesses and opinions on things, but until we find out the actual info, it's kind of like, yeah, okay. You know, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Um, and although I don't think that any of the YouTubers are doing any ill will to the brands, I want to be really specific, I think that Yesu's reaction to this was a little odd. Um, whether or not they believe it, and I don't know anyone at Yesu other than John Crook, whether or not they believe it, like, YouTubers are getting more word out about their radios than anyone, faster than anyone. And I appreciate that they can't just, like, ship us all radios, nor would I think we necessarily want them to uh, before anyone else can get them. I don't think that's the case. But I, I think that there might be a little bit more latitude of, like, hey, we're just, we're just passionate about this stuff. We're just into these radios. So coming out and being a little salty, a little salty, and, and, and coming at YouTubers or just people that have been talking about it, I appreciate if they're just making up straight lies, sure, flame them. I'm not, I'm not talking about that, but um, I don't know. Give, give, give everybody a little bit latitude. That's my thoughts. But anyway, let, let's talk about this, uh, this Yesu. To me, I think it's pretty obvious that this is roughly the same size as the 991A. Uh, some of the buttons on the top right are different where there used to be that little glass inlay with some uh, like little icon or uh, status buttons and whatnot. They've changed some things around. It's going to be smaller than that of the FTDX10. Like I said, it's probably going to be the size of the FT991. Um, I'm very interested in that side speaker. The AESS is a name which I'll, I'll switch over here in a second to the bullets um, talking about this. I like the idea of them including a speaker. Here's my curiosity. I think, this is, now I'm speculating. Sorry, John, now I'm gonna speculate. Um, I, I think this needs to hit the $1,000 price point, personally. I'd like to see it kind of be uh, the replacement to the FT450, which I understand wasn't $1,000, it was very much less than that. But I think one could expect with uh, a screen being more SDR components, depending on how much I don't know yet, because I haven't seen the block diagram for this. Uh, okay, 
Don's already in there. No, this is not targeted at the 7300. It's a replacement for the 1200. Okay. I, I, sometimes we speak so confidently on things. Don, you'll have to, we'll have to talk about it in the Discord after chat. Feel free to, to join us on the Discord after chat. It sounds like it might be spicy. Anyway, it's an HF-only radio. It does not have Yaesu System Fusion. It does not do VHF, UHF. Um, it does include the speaker on the side. It will take a DVI port connection, not HDMI, which I thought was kind of funny. That Don, I appreciate John said that. I appreciate that, but... The, the fact that it's not a 7300 competitor seems interesting to me, but okay. Uh, it seems like they're saying that, but that might not be the case. The, the connection for the monitor being DVI is kind of interesting. I, I think we really do need to make the switch to HDMI, and the comment given was that uh, we, can't, we can't run the audio over HDMI. So don't run the audio. Lots of devices don't run the audio. No big deal. Yeah, Southern Utah Ham Radio was commenting that, found it interesting that um, they, we found out about it from some third-party radio. Yeah, or some third-party website. So I don't know what the deal is there, but it sounds like there was partially some kind of leak that happened um, for information, but interesting. Um, yeah, Sean, so I, I would be, I, I would love to see this. I would love to see a ideally seven hundred fifty dollar radio, but if it's uh, if it's got a screen and you're controlling it and it's coming with an external um, external speaker, I I'd, I'd be surprised if it could hit seven fifty. Right, Spike. I, I get, <laughs> guys. You, you don't have to you don't have to, to verbatim, John. That's not the point of why I'm talking. The DVI port is an old technology. There are very few monitors that use DVI. If you don't understand that, then I don't know what to tell you. There are lots of monitors that take HDMI. It is time for the world to switch away from DVI. I hope that makes sense. You don't need to do audio over HDMI. And I know they're not going to connect the audio over HDMI plugs. They don't have to. No one's making them do that. So stay, saying that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> well, Donna, okay, I support that, too. Yeah, no, Spike, I get it. You're just, you're just representing what he said. And, uh, and accurately. I, I, I want everybody... So I, I, don't, I always want to strive to be accurate. I don't want to um, make blatant claims that aren't true. But at the same time, I think we can push a little bit back and say, hey, um, maybe we need something else. USB-C video, now we're talking. Or I guess Thunderbolt. Maybe we should all do Thunderbolt. That's it. Uh, Andrew Wells, there's nothing old about DVI. It's the same video signal. Just search Amazon for DVI to HDMI cable and move on. Um, okay. I'll wait to see what the output resolution is. They don't have to, I, I know, I, I appreciate that's what they said, but they don't have to do HDMI for audio. Like, you really don't have to, just don't, don't use the audio. Okay, so what, what's, what, what is, what's going on there? So they're basically saying that they're using the advanced digital RF technology introduced in the FTDX 101 and the FTDX 10. Could that mean uh, that there are some front-end components that are the same, some of the RF digital components? Possibly. Um, I, I would remind everybody that the FT-101 does not have the same components as the FTDX-10 in the discrete RF front end, so keep that in mind. I imagine that this radio um, may not have anything like that on the front end to keep price down. It's possible. It is that likely? Maybe. I don't know. I'm reading the chat as we're doing this. Uh, Yesu unmatched SDR technology in from emphasizing the receiver performance, so we can then assume it's an SDR, which I kind of already did. Bandpass filter dedicated for the amateur bands to eliminate out-of-band unwanted signals. Okay, good. 
Okay, so the RF front end design with the 250 megahertz high resolution direct digital synthesizer enables phenomenal multi-signal receiving characteristics. Okay, we don't know what that means exactly, what that actually uh, will sound like, but hoping for the best. QRM rejection by the dual core 32-bit high speed floating decimal point DSP for shift width notch contour uh, DNR noise blanker and three-stage parametric equalizer all good things I, I think we would come to expect this on most radios these days for new SDRs in particular because a lot of that can be done in the processing body high resolution 4.3 inch display good so this three-dimensional spectrum stream I don't know no 3d I'm thinking of the a the AESS we'll get to that I don't know what the um, spectrum stream is I'm assuming that's the the 3d waterfall that everybody either loves or hates hates uh, let's see. Southern Utah Ham Radio mentions Jason. Like HR 2.0 mentioned in his video, there was speculation of a 10 watt version, but only for another market. I think they could compete with the no, no, no. So that's that. That was something I agree that that people misunderstood that John called out. The flyer that a lot of people saw was uh, for the Japanese market. It was a Japanese flyer, and the Japanese have 50 watt and 10 watt license restrictions, right? Well. This radio is going to be restricted to 50 watts and 10 watts for those licenses in Japan. We, are look, we were looking at the ad copy for Japan, which is going to be commensurate to their radio service, right? Not the same thing. So even if we, they did sell the 50 watt or 10 watt unit in the United States, it wouldn't be smaller. It wouldn't be the size of a 705. It's just the same case that puts out 10 watts. That's my understanding. Mm-hmm. Hope that makes sense. VMI LED uh, indicator. So they, they moved an L, they, they put an LF, uh, an LED down. So that's good. Preset mode function, most suitable. So presets are something that um, the ICOM firmwares have for the 7300 and the 705. Good stuff. That's all good things that you can switch a preset to all the things you like for FT8 versus all the things you like for single sideband. I think that's good. The So... This acoustic enhanced speaker system with SP40 creates high fidelity audio output. That I'm, that I'm really interested in. I love the idea of having an external speaker ship with a radio, assuming, and so this is the, the whole give and take that, that these companies have to, have to consider. People may not want a speaker, right? They, they may not want to buy a radio I want to save $100. Don't, don't pack in the speaker. Don't bundle in the speaker. I don't use it. I only use headphones. Whatever. I could see someone making that argument. But if it's a competitive price radio, then I think the speaker's a good ad. I, I, now, somebody asked, and I can't comment on that. Uh, let's see. Where was it? Boy, you guys are you're chatting pretty fast here. I missed it. And if you say question, uh, I see then... Uh, I, th I see this as toting the audio output capability, which is cool. In your experience, are the Yesu speakers better audio out than off-brand or the $15 CB speakers? So yeah, G generally all the Japanese speakers are better, um, in my experience, than just fly-by-night Chinese, uh, Chinese companies. The, the inexpensive, cheap ones like on Amazon. Now, if you've got like a really good set of of monitors or, or really good speakers, it's an, and, and a mixer solution and a parametric receive solution, an external parametric those leads like a Heil or something like that, uh, that that's going to be really stellar audio quality too. But hey, I don't know. I, I, I think that if, if what I'm thinking is true, that they're trying to bring an, an inexpensive radio to market for people that are starting out in amateur radio that might not have, may not want an 891, may look at the 991 and think, I don't really like the screen. It's looking a bit dated. And I may not have the Castron FTDX10. So then they've got something that's kind of right around there, the $1,000 mark, right? Because if you go too lower, you're in 891 territory. If you go higher than that, you're FT991A territory. And any higher than that, you're FT4. Okay, where do we leave off? Uh, external display, DVI, I've said my piece on that. I think Mike was very passionate to K8MRD. By the way, go watch everybody's opinion on these. All the YouTubers kind of made videos. Dude, Ham Radio 2.0, and Mike K8MRD. All good thoughts, all good talking points. Everybody, everybody should remember, uh, remind themselves, remember that 
we are all human. <laughs> all YouTubers are human, myself included. Uh, and we have opinions of things we like and don't like. And ham radios are so good these days that really it's coming down to personal, substantive, just quirks that either people like or don't like. The, the, the way a VFO knob feels, the, the touch screen being tacky versus matte finish versus slick, those are all things that are now in the buyer's mind when they go to buy a radio because it's not just purely about what is the best performer because they're all really good. Um, on the Sherman Report, once you hit Sherwood, once you hit like 20, top 20, you're, you're in the best of the best and they're going to perform really well. Some things separate them from others, but you get the idea. Okay. I would have liked... <laughs> so, James, James, you, um, the... the <laughs> so, that was a funny thing that, that John mentioned. John mentioned during his, uh, his live stream that people saw this picture and they thought, they thought that the radio had a, uh, like a pop-up screen which I can understand why people would think that, which is like, oh man, uh, pop-up screen. Wow, the future we want. Uh, I, I laughed at, the, at that comment personally. Uh, but James said, I would have liked a detachable touchscreen. I, okay, I, I don't know. You pay for that, right? I mean, you may be able to make one. There's no reason why you wouldn't technically be able to make one, but at some point, at some point, you can't keep adding bells and whistles onto a radio before you got to sell it and then let ham radio, ham radio individuals make this stuff in the third-party market or make it as an accessory for the radio that you're making. Don't just pack it in because, and I want, I want everybody to really understand this, you don't just get things for free. When everybody hops on the comments for any manufacturer's radio and starts saying, you should have added this, you should have done this, why didn't you do this? That's dollar bills. That's all dollar bills. That's all going to cost money. And you may not want to pay that when you look at the final cost of it. So this is, this is undoubtedly um, one of those things, right? Let's see. So let's see, Trey. Uh, so is this an ICOM 7300 from Yesu, but six years late? I agree with what you said. I will likely come down, personal preference. Yeah, um, okay. So regardless of what Yesu's saying, um, just looking at the tea leaves here, this feels like something that's going to just naturally be compared to a 7300. Whether or not they're going to take the high ground and keep saying, well, it's not, but actually, um, it is. Everybody's going to see it that way. I don't know how they're going to avoid it. Now, uh, honestly... It may do very well for Yesu. Why? Because, um, because the, the 7300 is an older radio now. It's five years old. It's still great. It still has lots of good uses. It's still completely functional. I love the ICOM interface. Again, a lot of times people decide on a radio from the interface, and I personally like ICOM interfaces. But I also like Yesu too. I, you saw my review of the DX10, or the FT DX10. I like it. It's a good radio. I think that people are going to compare these two radios together. I think that's unavoidable. And so the question is really going to be like, who's the first YouTuber that's going to make a 7300 and uh, an FT710 comparison video? That's really what the question is, guys. I don't know if you know this or not. Uh, but that's what people are going to want to know. They're going to want to know how it compares, particularly whatever's at its price point. So whatever price point this thing comes in at, that's what people are going to be comparing it to. It doesn't matter what anyone says. That's just what it's going to be. I agree completely, Jody. You're 100% correct. The magic of this radio will be the price point, and maybe AESS if they got a really well-tuned speaker. Jody, as always, your thoughts are, are usually spot on, and I agree with you. So, yeah. <laughs> Don's, greatest, um, <laughs> Don's greatest point against the 7300 is that OVF light. I know, Don, I know. What is AES, they ask? It is the, we talked about it earlier, so you might have missed it. It is the acoustic enhanced speaker system with SP40, and it creates high fidelity audio output. That's what it does. Good stuff. Now, we don't know actually how it's going to work or how it functions, so we're all just going to wait and see. But hey, I think that's a relatively rational way of approaching this, right? Here is a list of bullets. We talked about them. We have thoughts. Nobody is slandering this radio. I feel like none of the YouTubers slandered this radio. 
We will continue to talk about things that get put in the news because that is what is interesting to us. We love this hobby and we love everything about it and we're going to keep doing that. So brands, get on board because it's going to keep happening. <laughs> I came for it. That's funny. Does it have Alexa? I don't think so. Uh, okay. So there you go. Hey, everybody, I hope you uh, consider sending me your, your overhead views because I'm building a database of your, I'm, uh, your personal, no, I mean your antenna, just your antenna information. This is not a, this is not a deep operative. No, no, I, I really do want to help you. A lot of people have, have already started doing this, and I'm compiling all these emails, and we're going to do a bit of a John Madden live replay on where we think we can put antennas uh, in your property. So make sure you send them, and I'll go back here. Just a reminder to everybody, if you haven't done that already, send me an email, josh at hamtactical.com, and 10 recommendations for Josh. Tell me what you're trying to do. Like, I want 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, and I want as many bands as possible, if that's possible. Tell me what your budget is, and show me a picture of your home. If you need more information, like you want to put a tower on the side of your house, maybe show me a picture of the side of your house. Don't just go in expecting me to know what the side of your house looks like and, and lacking information there, so... <laughs> Sean. <laughs> if Zygu can ship USB C on their radios, then Yesu ICOM can can too. Oh wait, they're still stuck in it. <laughs> I I don't know. I, I'm 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 curious that myself to be honest. I, I'm not sure sometimes why we stick to old standards in ham radio. Um so really interesting, really interesting point, Southern Utah Radio. I, I kind of disagree with you. Now, I, I know nobody, nobody can get in the way of the absolute steamroller that is the 7300 in, in regarding sales, right? It is the, it is the Honda Cub of, of ham radio, in, at least in my, in my eyes, in recent years. It is the, they sell a ton of those radios, and, and rightfully so. Uh, with that said, I, I don't know that... I don't know that 890, 891 sales necessarily lost out to the 7300. I'm sure it did in some cases. But the 891 is having uh, almost a renaissance, if you will, in people who are picking it up for POTA. You, you, look at all the POTA videos that feature the 891, and then think of all the people that are actually using the 891 for POTA. There's a ton of people that are doing that. It's a great radio for that. <laughs> I, I don't think I understand, James. Josh, the detachable touchscreen comment was an upgraded FT891 with color and touchscreen to match the FTM400. Yeah, so, you know, hear me out. I got, I got little boy here. <laughs> I've been traveling with this radio. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's turn off little boy. Video comment on the 818, by the way, guys. But let me go full wide here. So, you know, I'm, I'm traveling with the 818, right? And, you know, it's... Oh, don't look at these. You're not supposed to see the arms. Pretend like you didn't see that. Uh, so this slides into PAX Easy, right? It's, it's got a tiny screen, and it's got to be this way because it's got to maintain this footprint. This is a good footprint for packing. So is it, so is it on the FT891. If you add height even if it's like it stays small here and then you add height here and that's not a good look that that doesn't work that well again that's my opinion nobody at me uh yeah 100 percent. andrew andrew wells the yesu guy john crook john crook we know him good guy good guy not not calling John out here. Don't come at me, John. You're a big, big man. I don't want to get hurt. Not that you would do that. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. I'm kidding, John. Uh, the Yesu guy on YouTube said they can't be available in the U.S. until they are FCC type accepted. But can't amateur radio operators be responsible for their own equipment? No. No, that's two completely separate things. Um, 
So let's let's leave your let's leave your your second comment off for a second. Every radio that emits RF uh, has to be FCC certified, right? It has to go through some rigor of type acceptance before it can be sold on the market. That even includes things like refrigerators, okay? So that has to happen, just bar none. Now, now let's take your second, unpack your second comment. Uh, amateur radio operators can be responsible. Can't amateur radio operators be responsible for the equipment? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're still required to adhere to all FCC requirements in the use of your amateur radio, absolutely. Yesu's just not going to sell you radio because if they did, they'd get fined if you had an illegal radio running out there or they were caught selling radios that haven't been FCC type accepted. No, I'm not agreeing with the FCC's policy. I'm just telling you what it is. Trey T, we'll look forward to a, new, a video that I'm going to be putting out here next week. I wish they would update the 818 to 10, 15 watts and lithium battery. I would buy it then. That extra five watts doesn't buy you a whole lot. Uh, Douglas asks, does the 818 have two meters? Yes, it does. It does indeed. I'm going to go full wide again. Full wide again. Let's read some more of your comments before I wrap it up out here. Um, most people have audio enhancement devices already, so why would those people want some super audio? Unless, So I, I don't know, Ray, if that's in if you're commenting on the AESS, some people do. Those are likely not new hams. I'm assuming this is a move to get new hams stuff. That's my guess. One is a manufacturer's license. The other is a builder's prerogative. Here's the rules of the test. Yes, indeed, James, you got it. <laughs> so, so <laughs> okay, um, there is a radio that is like an 818. It is basically waterproof. It is the Lab 599 Discovery. It is right now selling at HRO, if they can get them, between $1,000 and $1,200. A lot of that is due to tariffs imposed on Russians because of the war. Even before that, though, that radio was $800, about. Uh, and it was an 818, very svelte, very good-looking radio, water-resistant. The thing it didn't have was a tuner. So it, is, it leads to reason that they can't put a tuner in the radio and make it waterproof for the price of an 818. 818 is $650. The Lab 599, even without the ATU, was about $800 to get it waterproof. So keep that in mind. Oh, and it didn't do 2 meter 70 centimeter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jam, jam scan cracked the nut on this one. Just pray. <laughs> Spray flex seal on it. Here, I'll put my, I'll put my FT uh, 818 right next to me. I did a couple of uh, soda hunts with this at the the field. Hundred percent. That's right, Southern Utah Ham Radio resonant antennas. That's where it's at. Team resonant antennas. I'm gonna have Leia make a shirt on that. Yeah, I would. Um, So, ham radio for non-techies, I think you're commenting on uh, the FT710. I think so. I would be shocked if it came in at $1,200 because that starts to cannibalize the FT991A, and it's literally competing against the price that the 7300 sits at right now. And regardless of what they say, if you want to disrupt the sales for the 7300, you're going to have to be compelling at a lower price point from my point of view at this point. Although they've done a good job with the FT4DX, but they did that by adding capabilities that were unique to it. My point, my POV. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and that's straight trade tariffs. Lab 599 is straight trade tariffs. It, it shouldn't be that price. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so Sean is asking, I'm giving it its time because I never really played around with one. One of my favorite features on it. Okay. Um, it's pretty simple. It's an old school radio. It feels old. I, it's not really, it's not a pro, it's not a pro tip, right? Uh, I like that it has an internal battery regardless of how meh it is. I, <laughs> I, I think it's dumb, but I love the fact that it has a BNC connector and, a P, and an SO239 so that you can plug whatever antenna into it without needing an adapter. I love that for some reason. There's no anxiety of making sure you have the right adapters on hands. You're just like, oh, no, I'm good. I got this chungus of a radio that can do it. That just cracks me up. And it just it works. It kind of does all the things. You can do VHF, UHF with it. You can do HF, and you're good to go. So. Yeah, it's it's simple. It's just a simple radio. What I don't like is the lack of filtering. Who, buddy? That thing is just... It's an RF hot dog down the hallway. Uh, Jody, don't look at the... Don't look at my little arms here to answer your question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Douglas. Um... Pros and cons, 818 versus 705. Uh, pro, 818. Cost. Pro, 705. Everything else, except I think the 818 might be slightly more portable. Slightly. Depending on your pack configuration. The neck strap is key. The neck strap, that's right. Yeah, well, the neck strap is now gone from this particular unit. All right. Yeah, um, so once upon a time, people did man pack portable. Like, they would actually use the neck strap and walk around the beach dragging a wire behind them. Hey, everybody, how's it going? What's 10 meters like today? I, I, not many people do that anymore. There are a lot of people are doing parks on the air and summits on the air. Not to say people can't do it. I think it's still cool. I just, I personally wouldn't do it. I wouldn't really be that keen of having, like, a freaking radiating element right up against my face. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. How many people are we watching or are watching right now? I'm not watching anybody. I don't know where we're leaving the chat. Um, yeah, everybody, let's let's go back over here for a second. Blue to boop. This is my, my least best camera, so sorry about that. So there is a link in the description. Hope you consider taking it to join us over on the Discord. I won't be spending a ton of time out there tonight because it is already 9 o'clock here. I'll probably do an hour and then pack it in. I'm just not used to the East Coast uh, time at all. So uh, call it the East Coast, although I, Ohio I feel is a little, a little bit a little bit west of what should be called the East Coast, but hey, I'm not going to be upset about it. All right. So if you've got further questions, take them on over to the Discord. It's a really cool little chat system we use. Tell people out with Amateur Radio. Link is in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this show. I am traveling, so I'll be back to some fun live streams next week, Saturday, same time. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. And I'm Josh Nass. I hope you enjoyed the Hammer and Crash Course. Take it easy, everybody. See ya. Nope. That's not it. <laughs> I gotta do the patron things. I, did I mention I'm really tired? I feel like I'm really jet-lagged, and I haven't got over it yet. So, working on that. Working on that right now. Need to, need to, need to sleep. So that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna do one hour, and then I'm going to bed. Have to. Have to for my sanity. Have to go to bed. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I figured, Michael. People in Ohio consider themselves Midwestern. Uh, I, I, can, I can see that. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of beer. 
So big thank you to all my patron friends over there. Thank you for the support. I really do appreciate it. We're, um, we're still out from uh, patron picks, but that vote will be coming up soon. So thank you for those that get involved in that. And, yep, check in the chat. I think everybody's good. Yeah, I actually fly out. I fly out on Monday, which is a little little late. A little too much Ohio. I'm just kidding. I like it here. Half a ham. Join us on the Discord. Ask all the questions you want. Uh, Optimus Prime versus Shockwave. That's a really good question. I don't think I can answer that one. Yeah, I don't think I can do... I mean, Shockwave, probably? Shockwave, I think? Shockwave, right? Shockwave. Let me go get a beer. I'll see you over in the Discord. I'm playing you out with the memes. Enjoy them. 7-3.